the greatest science fiction books of all time. Hello Booktube, I'm Jonathan and welcome to Words in Time. Now recently I came across a list of the best science fiction books of all time that was put together by the planets. And I thought it might be interesting for me to go through that list, share my thoughts on some of the books and their rankings, as well as let you know what kind of readers I think each book might appeal to. And for some of the books that I haven't read, I want you guys to let me know in the comments whether you think I should pick them up. So, for the sake of time, this list does have 100 books, but I'm going to go through the top 40. So, let's get into them, starting with number 40, EXO by Fonda Lee. This is an interesting inclusion because it's not one that I've read and not one that I've heard a lot about. Although I have heard a lot about Fonda Lee's Greenbone Saga. So if you're a fantasy fan, especially of Fonda Lee's, and you're looking to get into some sci-fi, maybe try out EXO. It does have a bit of an interesting premise in which Earth has been colonized by aliens. Apparently this is somewhat YA, so it might not necessarily appeal to me, but if you're looking for some sci-fi YA or you're a fan of Fonda Lee, this might be an interesting one to check out. Number 39, Neuromancer by William Gibson. So I have read Neuromancer, arguably the defining cyberpunk novel, and for me, I think I perhaps more so respect and appreciate it for its ambitiousness and influence than I did actually enjoy the reading experience. It's a little tough going, it can be quite slow and confusing, however, I do still think about it from time to time, so it does have a lasting impact, and it might be one that I enjoy more on a reread. If you're looking for some fairly hard sci-fi, something with a lot of layers that you can really sink your teeth into, definitely check out this cyberpunk classic, Neuromancer. Number 38, Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. Now this one will be way higher for me, so let's talk about it. In Ender's Game, you have military sci-fi combined with a coming of age story. And it dives into some really cool sci-fi concepts, as well as some rather deep philosophical themes. It has some great characters, it's an awesome character-driven sci-fi story, while also having a breakneck pace. The story just absolutely had me flipping through the pages, all leading up to a jaw-dropping ending. I'm glad Ender's Game made the list, but I think it's essential for any sci-fi to read much higher. Much, much higher for me. Number 37, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? by Philip K. Dick. Clearly one of the best titles of all time, is this one of the best sci-fi books? Well, I think 37 is pretty reasonable ranking. I enjoyed this one quite a lot. I think you should check out Do Android Stream of Electric Sheep if you really want to dive into some sci-fi themes. I think the plot and the characters are somewhat interesting in this book, but the ideas is where it really shines. It tackles concepts like androids and humanity, um, the media, drugs, and religion, and it does so in this kind of slightly trippy, surreal, classic Philip K. Dick kind of way. So if that appeals to you, definitely check out number 37, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. Number 36, Red Rising by Pierce Brown. So I've read the original Red Rising trilogy, and of those three, the second book, Golden Sun, was my favorite. But I did enjoy all three books. And the strength, I think, of this series is in its characters and its action. It has a gripping story and a real kind of strong sense of point of view from each of its characters. It's very different to the last entry, Do Android Dream of Electric Sheep, in the sense that I think some of the concepts and themes are not as strong. That's not quite as much a focus of the series, but if you're looking to get into a future world inspired by the Roman Empire with some good action and really just want to burn through some pages, then definitely look up Red Rising. Number 35, Red Shirts by John Scalzi. I've read Old Man's War by John Scalzi, but I haven't read Red Shirts. I believe it's a bit of a parody of certain characters in the series Star Trek. And even though I am quite a large sci-fi fan, I haven't actually watched that much Star Trek, which is probably why I haven't picked this one up yet, because I thought maybe not all of the references would land for me, but I think I'd probably still enjoy it, because I know John Scalzi can be quite funny, Old Man's War was quite entertaining, not everything landed, but it was still amusing, so if you are a fan of Star Trek and you like a bit of comedy in your sci-fi, then maybe Red Shirts could hit for you. Number 34, The Martian by Andy Weir. This is one of my favorites, so why do I love it? 
Well, we have Mark Watney who is stranded on Mars and everything that can go wrong does go wrong. And he needs to use his MacGyver-esque knowledge of science and mathematics in order to survive. I was on the edge of my seat throughout this entire book. It was very funny. It made science and maths and physics just really cool and entertaining. And this book has become so popular that it's almost not a cool choice. I don't care. Higher. Way higher. Number 33, World War Z by Max Brooks. This is one I haven't read, although I have watched the film. It's not something I hear talked about a lot in my sci-fi circles, but perhaps that's because it kind of blurs the line between sci-fi, apocalypse, zombie, and horror genres. Typically, that's not my favorite subgenre. I feel like a lot of those stories end up being rather similar, but perhaps I could be proven wrong with World War Z. If you have read this one, let me know whether you think I might enjoy it. Number 32, The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. This is another one where I haven't read the book, but I have watched the films. And as something that is somewhat YA, that's probably why I haven't read it, because I think it probably won't appeal to me. But I know a lot of people that swear by The Hunger Games and absolutely love it. And I did enjoy the films. I think especially the first one or two. So maybe I should check this out. Maybe you guys can convince me in the comments. And this is another one that it's perhaps so popular, too popular to be cool. Uh, but I respect its place on the list. Number 31, The Children of Men by P.D. James. So this is the third book in a row, which I haven't read, but I have watched the film. Jonathan, stop watching so many movies and read the darn books. Anyway, this one has a very intriguing premise in which a near future humanity hasn't seen a real live birth in over a decade. So I absolutely love the film, in part due to the setting and the themes and the ideas, but also just for the amazing visuals and the direction of Alfonso Cuaron. I think he's very, very talented. So do I need to check out the book as well? Well, you guys let me know in the comments if you happen to have read The Children of Men. Number 30, Hyperion by Dan Simmons. So this is one of the big names in science fiction. And why is that the case? Well, in Hyperion, we follow seven pilgrims on a pilgrimage to the planet of Hyperion to visit the time tombs, which are moving backwards in time and are guarded by the Shrike. And they each tell their backstory in a Canterbury Tales style format. So we get several different genres within this sci-fi book of Hyperion. In it, we get an epic world, some really deep characters, some mind blowing sci-fi concepts and some of the best prose in all of the genre. For me, this is a pantheon great of science fiction. Although I will say that I enjoy Hyperion as part of the Hyperion Cantos. I really like all four books and I think the sequels are slightly underrated. I think Hyperion, it can stand as a standalone, but if you want a complete story arc, I really recommend reading the whole series. But any which way you look at it, bump it up, baby. Hyperion, number 29. Watches by Dean Koontz. So I have to admit, even though Dean Koontz is a best-selling author and you see his books in bookstores all the time, I never realized he wrote science fiction. Although the premise for this one does sound kind of interesting. I believe we follow a couple of mutants that escape from a government institution. So I'm somewhat intrigued, not familiar with his works, but let me know if I should try reading Watches. Number 28, The Forever War by Joe Holderman. The Forever War is an absolute classic within the subgenre of military sci-fi. Joe Holderman uses his experiences in the Vietnam War to tell us a story about a battle in the future between Earth and aliens. And I really like how it combines the exploration of war and its effects on people and relationships and society as a whole, along with some cool sci-fi stuff like aliens and technology, space travel and time dilation. So. If you're interested in some classic sci-fi, some military sci-fi, definitely look this one up. I think 28 is a pretty reasonable spot for the Forever War. Number 27, The Stand by Stephen King. So regrettably, I haven't actually read anything by Stephen King, but this is something that I will be correcting as The Dark Tower is on my schedule for 2023, and The Stand is very high on my list of Stephen King books to check out as well. As someone that's not 
deep within the King world, but a bit of an outsider that enjoys watching on BookTube, it seems like The Stand is definitely one of the most popular. And it's one that people recommend to me because even though it has a blend of post-apocalyptic with horror and fantasy elements, apparently there is some sci-fi in there that for me, a big sci-fi fan, I might enjoy as well. So let me know what you think of The Stand compared to other Stephen King books and where it's ranked on this list. Number 26, Dragonflight by Anne McCaffrey. So I own this book and will be reading it very soon because this is actually my October TBR pick from my patrons. So if you're interested in learning more about that, check out the links to my Discord server and Patreon memberships in the description below and you can help vote on what I should read. And I'll be reading Dragonflight very soon. Dragons. Not exactly a genre known for dragons sci-fi, but apparently this is sci-fi. I've been told there's a bit of an explanation. We're on another world. There's some interesting things to do with technology and I'm excited to read this one. And it also looks kind of short and fun. I've been reading some chunkers recently, so I'm excited to get into something that should be a fun read in Dragonflight. Number 25, The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is one I have read and it didn't entirely click with me. I think it definitely would have been groundbreaking when it was released, but when I read it just a year or two ago, I found that I wasn't entirely engaged by the story and it, everything just moved along a little bit too slowly. And while the themes were somewhat interesting, they didn't quite hook me in and I wasn't sure what I was supposed to connect to and it didn't have a lasting impact for me, but I recognize that it was very influential and a lot of people love this book. So I can see why it was ranked pretty highly, I wouldn't put it this high on my own list, but definitely a classic that influenced a lot of future sci-fi books that came after it. Number 24, Contact by Carl Sagan. I haven't read Contact, but it is quite high on my TBR because I really enjoy first contact stories and I also like some hard sci-fi, which I'm guessing this book might contain seeing as Sagan was an actual scientist. So let me know if you've read Contact and how high should I bump it up my TBR. Number 23, Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. We all love the movie, do I love the book as well? Well, this is actually on my schedule for November. I haven't read it yet, but my friend Dan from Treebeard Book Reviews reached out and said, do you want to do a read along of Jurassic Park in November? I said, absolutely. So if like me, you unfortunately haven't read it yet, feel free to join along in November and we can find out whether it lives up to the amazing film. Number 22, A Wrinkle in Time by Madeleine La Engel. I didn't read this as a kid and haven't thought to go back and try it as an adult, but I have been told that it stands the test of time. This book supposedly explores some rather deep themes as well as combining some elements from science fiction as well as fantasy. Uh, one of my friends, Ali, who recently started her own booktube channel is quite a big fan of this one. So definitely go check out her channel and let me know whether you think it's worth my time picking up A Wrinkle in Time. Number 21, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I've told this story on the channel before, but Many years ago, I attempted to watch the Hitchhiker's film on a plane, and I know that a plane is not the optimal film viewing environment, but it just did not work for me, and that kind of put me off reading the book. And when I shared this story, all the comments that I got on that YouTube video was, Jonathan, don't let the film put you off, you absolutely have to read this book. So I definitely want to check it out. It sounds quite funny. I do enjoy some humor in my sci-fi books like writers such as Kurt Vonnegut. So I'm intrigued to check out Douglas Adams. I'll be reading Hitchhiker's Guide in 2023. Number 20, Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. So we've made it into the top 20 and we've done so with an absolute bang, an explosion of tears and emotion and let's talk about it. So in Flowers for Algernon, the main character, Charlie, has a very low IQ, and he undergoes an experimental surgery to improve his intelligence after it was successfully performed on a mouse. However, the mouse starts to regress, and the question becomes, will the same happen to Charlie? And this book is told through journal entries, so we get to see Charlie's progression, both in terms of what he chooses to do within the story, but also how he writes, how he expresses himself, and it's a very interesting a journey as a story and also a very interesting emotional exploration as well. 
and the ending, oof. I didn't cry. And I definitely didn't cry for a solid 20 minutes after I finished it. Everyone's gotta read it. Oh. Flowers for Algernon, way higher. Number 19, A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. So I've both read the book and watched the film, and while I enjoyed both, this definitely won't appeal to everyone. So in this near future dystopia, this book explores some rather heavy themes like violence or ultraviolence, uh, drugs, media, society, and individuality. I found this book to make me very uncomfortable, but I felt it to be quite rewarding if you push through some of those tougher scenes in order to get to some of the deeper explorations. I also thought it did some interesting things uh, with language, creating its own slang, and this book, I probably wouldn't quite put it in my top 20, but for its lasting impact, I probably would put it on a longer list. So it might not work for you, but if you think you're okay with some heavier subject material, maybe you wanna check out A Clockwork Orange. Number 18. Solaris by Stanislaw Lem. So this is a sci-fi classic that I haven't got to yet, but it is on my TBR for 2023. It sounds like it is science fiction, but perhaps also has some thriller elements as well, and it's maybe one that doesn't necessarily focus on the plot, but is more engaged with the ideas, uh, possibly like Arthur C. Clarke, which is, I don't know if that's a good comparison or not, but definitely one of my favorite authors as well. So I'm excited to get to this one. Let me know your thoughts on Solaris. Number 17, To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. Well, it's a stunning title with a stunning cover, is it a stunning book? I haven't read To Sleep in a Sea of Stars yet, and that's because I've only heard polarizing comments. Every reaction that I've seen is either absolutely loved it or absolutely hated it. And for a book that's 900 pages, that's, that's a little bit of a gamble, a little bit of a risk to take on. So if any of you have read it, get your comments uh, below and see if you can tip me one way or the other on To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. Number 16, A Canticle for Leibowitz by Walter M. Miller Jr. I've read A Canticle for Leibowitz and it was a little bit of a miss for me. I'll start with the fact that I think the cover, or at least the version that I have, was kind of misleading. I'll put it behind me. It's the one with all of the flames that kind of makes it look like this book is gonna be an epic adventure. Whereas in reality, this book kind of has little to no plot at all. It is very talky and it is all about the themes which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, once I got adjusted to what the book actually was trying to do, I was kind of interested in some of the characters, but for me, it didn't really build to anything all that satisfying. It kind of turned into debates about certain topics, and I just wasn't super invested in those either way. So I know a lot of people love this one. I think it will definitely hit for readers, especially if you're a fan of a post-apocalyptic setting and religious and philosophical discussions, but this one didn't hit for me and probably wouldn't make my list. Number 15, I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. So I haven't read the book or watched the film, so I kind of missed out on the I Am Legend boat, but I'd be willing to give it a try. The post-apocalyptic story, vampire story, not typically my favorite subgenres, but I have heard good things and I've heard that it has a great ending as well. So let me know in the comments whether you think I should read I Am Legend. Number 14, Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. This is an absolute classic within dystopian fiction, and I think for good reason. I think it explores some really important themes and the prose is phenomenal. Bradbury is an absolutely beautiful writer. I think when it comes to the story, I was slightly less engaged than some of the other dystopian classics, but this is still a must read. I would definitely have it on my list, maybe not quite as high as 14, but I think it's pretty much essential reading. Number 13, The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. Back to back Bradbury, I like it. I haven't read The Martian Chronicles yet, but recently I decided that I like Fahrenheit 451 enough that I really should check out more from Bradbury, so The Martian Chronicles is on my TBR for 2023. Let me know which you prefer, which you would have ranked higher between Fahrenheit 451 and The Martian Chronicles. Number 12, 2001 A Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke. I've both read the book and watched the film and absolutely loved both of them. Arthur C. Clarke is one of my favorite writers. Why do I enjoy 2001 so much? So 
I think it has a really interesting premise where this mysterious monolith appears in front of hominids thousands of years ago and then reappears on a space mission thousands of years in the future. Where did it come from and what is its purpose? I think this book combines hard sci-fi with some mind-blowing concepts that kind of zoom out, have kind of a existential universal impact, but also really affected me on a personal level as well. If I had to pick a favorite Arthur C. Clarke book, I'd probably go with Childhood's End, but I love a number of his books and have no problem with 2001 being ranked this high on the list. Number 11, The Foundation Trilogy by Isaac Asimov. They're cheating a little bit here by including a trilogy, although it is one story. In fact, it was originally written as eight short stories that were split into three books uh, with an additional introduction that was written for the first novel. So when I read them, I really liked the first book and then I quite liked books two and three. I think this book is undeniably influential and you can still feel its effects in books being written today. And it had a lot of really interesting aspects to it, especially in terms of the sci-fi concepts and the ideas. It does feel a little bit dated in terms of its writing style as it can be a little bit stiff, uh, the characters aren't all that three-dimensional and it's quite expositional. But if you are reading for ideas and concepts and you are less interested in a fast-moving plot or interesting characters, then I still think that Foundation is still a very interesting and worthwhile read today. I would definitely have it on my list, although it wouldn't quite be this high, but I definitely still respect the Foundation Trilogy. Number 10, Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. This makes me happy, very happy indeed. There are a number of Kurt Vonnegut books that I think could have made the top 10, and this is one of them. So why did I enjoy Slaughterhouse-Five? Well, I think it has a great premise of this character that is a World War II soldier that comes unstuck in time after contact with aliens. So this book explores some really heavy themes like war and death and asks some pretty serious existential questions, but while using some very cool and clever sci-fi concepts and being absurdly funny at the same time. Kurt Vonnegut is one of my favorite writers. This absolutely deserves to be in the top 10. Number nine, I, Robot by Isaac Asimov. The only thing I've read from Asimov so far is the original Foundation trilogy, but I, Robot, The End of Eternity, and The Gods Themselves are all quite high on my TBR and I want to get to in 2023. Let me know what you think is your favorite work by Isaac Asimov. Number eight, Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. This is one I read as a kid and I enjoyed, but it's not something that comes to mind when I think of my favorite science fiction books. So let me know whether you think this is worth a reread as an adult. It would be interesting to see how it stacks up to some of my other favorite classics upon a second reading. Number seven, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. So we've gone back to back again, this time with Jules Verne. My feelings on this one are pretty much the same as the last. So. Maybe it's time for me to do a bit of a Verne reread. Let me know which is your favorite between the two and which I should pick up first. Number six, Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. This is another dystopian classic and I love how it sets up what appears to be a utopian setting, but then through certain forms of manipulation such as medication and a social hierarchy might actually be more of a dystopia. This is one that I enjoyed about as much as Fahrenheit 451. I definitely recommend it and I would put it on my list. Maybe not as high as number six, but I think it's definitely worth checking out Brave New World. Number five, War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. So I've watched the film and I've read other books from Wells, but I haven't actually read The War of the Worlds. This is a very influential story about an alien invasion and it is famous for this story that it was told as a radio broadcast and people thought it was real and it caused mass hysteria. I'm kind of skeptical about the extent to which that actually happened, but I like to believe it was real anyway, just because it's a fun story to tell. It's one that I should definitely get to eventually because it is a classic. Let me know how high I should place on my TBR, The War of the Worlds. Number four, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. 
So we've gone back to back again. If that was allowed, you probably should have just put about four Vonnegut books in a row, but that's okay, I'll allow it. This is one that I have read. I have read The Time Machine by H.T. Wells, and I believe this is the first book, not the first ever book to talk about time travel, but the first book to ever use a time machine. Now, I think this book probably would have been a mind-blowing read in 1895. As a modern reader, I don't think it does anything too unexpected or will feel all that new if you've read other time travel stories before, but it's a quick read, it's a short read, it still has some interesting things to say, and I definitely wouldn't have it in my top five, but I think it's a worthwhile read, one you can pick up and read quite quickly if you like classics, if you like time travel. Number three, Dune by Frank Herbert. So if you would ask me to guess what would have been number one on this list, I would have gone with Dune. I would say this is probably the most popular book within the sci-fi community. I believe it's the highest selling sci-fi book of all time. Would I have it this high? Let's talk about it. Well, I think the world building in Dune is absolutely phenomenal. One of the deepest worlds, one of the best settings in sci-fi history. I also think the thematic exploration is wonderful. There is so much to pick on, up on, so much that you can enjoy on multiple rereads as well. For me, the plot moved a little bit slowly, and the characters, while I did find the characters interesting, like Paul and Jessica and the Baron, I'm not sure I ever engaged with them, became as connected to them quite as much as I wanted to. I have the seemingly, apparently, hot take that Dune is very, very good. It's just not my favorite book of all time, and that's okay. It would definitely be on my list. It wouldn't be quite as high as number three, but I know a lot of you out there are saying it should have been number one. Number two, 1984 by George Orwell. This is another of the dystopian classics, and it is my personal favorite. In this book, we get a very rich setting some really important thematic explorations, and a plot that absolutely hooked me and led to a very powerful ending, one that just felt like taking a sledgehammer to the soul. This is one of my all-time favorite books and definitely would have made my top 10 as well. So here we are, we've made it to number one. I hope you're enjoying the video. If you are, check out the link to our Discord server and Patreon memberships in the description below, and you can join in on the discussion about these sci-fi books and more. Look forward to seeing you there. So without further ado, number one, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This is a very interesting choice because some people regard Frankenstein as the first science fiction book ever written. I think there are arguments to be made for some earlier works, but for the sake of this hypothetical, we'll say it's the first. And to me, it's a little bit sad that somebody wrote a book, started a genre, then thousands of writers were inspired to write books within that genre for decades, centuries afterwards, and nobody wrote a better one. Like, to me, that is like you have your husband or your wife and somebody asks you, what's the best date you've ever been on? And you say, our first date. And at first that sounds really cute, but then you realize you had this amazing first date, and then every date you ever went on afterwards was worse? That's kind of a disappointment to me. But anyway, Frankenstein, an absolute classic. Unfortunately, I haven't read it yet, but it is on my TBR for 2023. Everybody knows the story, or at least they think they know the story, but the actual explorations in this book are supposed to be rather deep and extremely rewarding. I definitely want to get to it because Apparently it's the best sci-fi book of all time, so I need to read it. Uh, let me know how high you would have placed Frankenstein on your list. So what are my final thoughts on the list? Well, there are a lot of great books that I really enjoy here, and several that I'm looking forward to reading at some point in the future. I think this book showed quite a lot of respect to the classics, which I think is great. There'd definitely be a lot of classics on my list too. Although, when I'm deciding how to rank my books, things like influence or longevity wouldn't factor in as highly, wouldn't be that important. I would probably just rank my books by personal enjoyment. And for me personally, I would include a few more modern books, perhaps some space opera, some hard sci-fi, some concept driven stuff, but that's just my personal preference. And overall, I think there's definitely a lot of books on this list that you should check out. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe and you can find more sci-fi content over here.